This is Joshua Thickpen, and I am an IB student from the European School. Along with a couple other classmates, we would like to show you some of the activities that we did. Hello, my name is Juliana Raja, and I took part of the Otter Day Enrichment Toys Project with the Dukan Rescue Ranch, and I decided to do this project and take part of the volunteer group to be able to help the otter out and put in practice my design abilities and creativity. My name is Juliana Morales. I am a student at the European School and I help the Toucan Rescue Ranch with enrichment toys for Emma the Otter. I decided to join this project because I believe that otters are a really important uh, sign of a healthy ecosystem and it's really important to know about them. Uh, especially with Emma, in this case, she was an otter that was rescued by the Toucan Rescue Ranch and unfortunately she cannot live in the wild, so it's really important to have enrichment and help her really fulfill the role she had in the wild, but while being in the Toucan Rescue Ranch. We first met with the Toucan Rescue Ranch team at about the start of February and we decided to have several meetings to decide who was going to do research, who was going to do enrichment. Personally, I wanted to do enrichment and with another classmate. And we programmed several meetings to decide what materials we should use, what toys we should make in order for that the otter, Emma, those toys were safe for her and were appropriate for enrichment. So the first thing I did with the process was to make some sketches of my ideas. Uh, I ended up with an idea of making a ladder-like structure out of bamboo. The idea of making it out of bamboo is for it to be completely safe for the otter as it is an organic material and it won't blister or break when she uses it. Um, to start the process off, I had to go look for bamboo. Uh, so I cut it up with a machete and added little holes for the otter to look for food in it. To start off the constructing process, I was able to find bamboo and with help I cut it into pieces to make two different columns and also rows to make the structure of a ladder. I also added different holes made with a machete so that the food could be inserted there and the otter could have more, more of a challenge trying to find the food with only the sense of touch and smell. After the structure was done, I was able to visit the Toucan Rescue Ranch and actually apply the toy with Emma in her enclosure. We placed the toy in the pool against the pool wall before Emma was released and we also added different types of fish so that Emma could find the food just by smell. Emma was really happy with the toy and she really enjoyed her time trying to find the food. This was really effective and we also, after Emma had time with the toy against the wall, we also put it completely flat in the water so that Emma could swim around it and also find the food in the water. My original idea was to get like a ball made out of wood and have several holes uh, made carved into it so we could place food in them so that Emma had a hard time uh, finding her food. Um, so it was difficult to find the materials, but at the end we decided to make it out of coconut, which floats and serves the purpose we originally wanted it to be. Um, it was pretty entertaining to see Emma try to find the fish, food, in her little place and it was very nice. So in the end this was a really effective project that really helped Emma enrich her environment. Uh, this is really important because enrichment toys help otters and different animals not have as repetitive and monotone days which is really important if they are in captivity or if they live in rescue centers. For this river cleanup, we worked with Rio Urbano, an organization dedicated to making change in rivers. This time, we cleaned Rio Maria Aguilar, located near the center of San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica. Now, the river was mostly filled with textiles, such as many clothing items, rags, etc. Also, to some degree, there were some plastics.
Once we got to the river, we started working in the shore. We couldn't get into the water because, well, it was really dirty and it was a hazard. So in the shore, we grabbed our plastic bags and with shovels and machetes, we started chopping away into the cloth that was around the rocks and roots and other plastics and putting them into the bags. We couldn't make them too heavy because we had to go, go up a hill and take the plastic bags into a roof. So that's what we did for about an hour or two. And in that time, together with the whole of Rio Urbano and all the people from different universities that came to work for the morning, uh, we managed to clean over one ton of trash in the river. We didn't really realize how dirty the river was until we went down to the shore when we saw all the garbage around and the smell of the water, which was really shocking to us. Uh, and we might think that a ton of garbage is a lot, but in reality, from when we first got to the river and when we left, we didn't really notice much of a difference, which really shows how much garbage there is in the river. Uh, something that shocked us was the houses next to the river, which in the winter many times get flooded and people have to put up with diseases and the smell of the water uh, at some locations. And we were happy to help these people because they really need our help. And while we do think uh, this experience might not be the best or most joyful or happy experience, we do think that it is necessary because it shows how people need our help and how if we are willing, we can help them. So finally, we also did some research about the state of the rivers where we live and we created a post about our research to share it in social media platforms and raise awareness about river pollution. Simple lifestyle changes can make a big difference in improving the river's quality if we all decide to apply them in our everyday lives.